and that kind of thing, that, that's good. But are we, what are we producing? Okay, so we want, we want to trade among ourselves, but what are we producing to trade with? As it relates to finally establishing a fishing agreement with Trinidad and Tobago, Mr. Comichon says the level of thought must be much broader. He says we must move away from looking at just two sets of fishermen in controversy and seek to create a CARICOM fishing industry that will benefit everyone. Should we have a collectively owned CARICOM fishing fleet? I mean, you have deep sea trawlers from Japan and South Korea and countries halfway around the world that come to our seas and exploit our, our fish reserves. We have not acted collectively to develop. Why don't we have our own fishery, uh, fish canning factory? Why are we importing canned fish from Canada, for example, and other countries of the world? As public concern continues about some of the fees imposed by the banking sector, the Fair Trading Commission says it's monitoring the situation. The FTC's Director of Fair Competition, Antonio Thompson, made the revelation during the agency's outreach program in the city this afternoon. Kent Gerson brings us that story. Swan Street on a busy Friday afternoon. That's where the FTC staff members position themselves in an effort to spread the word about what the agency does and the resulting benefits to Barbados. It's here that we took the opportunity to ask Director of Fair Competition, Antonia Thompson, about the issue of bank fees. Some account holders have called the fees excessive and or unfair. Mr. Thompson says they monitor the situation on an ongoing basis. We can't say that there has been a breach. What we can say is that um, a number of years ago, we would have done a, a banking study and we would have actually looked at the fees that the banks charge. Um, so. It isn't, it isn't beyond us to take a look at that again in terms of the fees and the fee structures of the, bank, the banks. Um, and that falls within the remit of the Fair Competition Act, essentially, to take a look at that. He adds that it doesn't take a complaint for the FTC to start an investigation. If we have any reason to believe that something is wrong, or even if we, if we are thinking about things that, that, that might be, or we, we recognize in looking at the business environment that there is an issue, we can initiate um, investigations on our own initiative. Regarding the outreach program in general, Mr. Thompson says it's intended to give consumers a better understanding of the commission. We are here as all three operational arms, utility regulation, letting people know about their rights in terms of standards, um, fair competition division, letting people know about how to look after, check out prices to see if there's a cartel, if there's excessive pricing, um, how businesses can respond or come into us and, and, and have any issues dealt with. And of course, we're here from a consumer perspective. We're, we're helping the consumer to understand their rights in terms of um, contractual obligations, um, no, um, no refund, no exchange signs, um, those types of things. The outreach continues for the next three Fridays, moving to Sheraton Centre Mall next week, Cave Shepherd the following week, and then back here to Swan Street for the final session. Kent Gerson, CBC News. Thanks, Kent. We're hearing also that government is placing special emphasis on technological and vocational training. Acting Prime Minister Santia Bradshaw made this clear at the World Skills Barbados closing and awards ceremony. She was addressing the participants, organizers, and others involved in the program at the Lloyd Erskine Sandiford Center. I want to note also that the ministry's new name shows this administration is placing special emphasis on technological and vocational training. These are both areas well represented by the World Skills Program, which means that the Ministry of Education, Technological and Vocational Training sees the promotion of skills, development and excellence as a core part of what it is trying to achieve. Ms. Bradshaw, who is also the Minister of Education, Technological and Vocational Training, noted that the Technical and Vocational Education and Training Council now falls within the Education Ministry. 
She believes this direct link will serve to enhance the Council's key function of coordinating and managing the national technical vocational and training system. We at the Ministry expect that the TVET Council's coordinating and managing role for the national TVET system, which includes public and private training institutions, as well as secondary school programs, will be strengthened by this new direct link. It means that the TVET Council's quality assurance functions, effected through the development of standard base qualifications, such as the National and Caribbean Vocational Qualification, which are used for competence-based training, assessment and certification, as well as its awarding body function for the same CVQs, will therefore be more effective and efficient. During the ceremony, participants from the Samuel Jackman Prescott Institute of Technology, the Barbados Vocational Training Board and the Barbados Community College received their certificates of participation and awards. They competed in several categories, including automotive technology, beauty therapy and graphic design technology, among others. Barbados' international business sector is set to be diversified as government considers exploring new markets. While acknowledging the importance contributions of the traditional countries, International Business Minister Ronald Toppin says greater opportunities can stem from developing relations with others. He made the point during the corporate and trust service providers consultation at the Savannah Beach Hotel. As earlier hinted, I want to see us diversify into non-traditional markets, both for the purpose of attracting foreign direct investment and accessing their markets for our goods and services. The traditional markets have served us well, but we must now fully and effectively utilize the extensive treaty network we have with other countries in Africa, Latin America, Asia, and the Middle East. Government is committed to increased cooperation between Barbados and Venezuela. Minister in the Ministry of Foreign Trade, Sandra Husbands, gave that assurance as the two countries celebrated Venezuela's 270th anniversary of independence. Kareem Smith has those details. There was no shortage of support from government ministers as the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela celebrated its independence. Among them, Minister of Foreign Trade, Sandra Husbands, who says after almost 50 years, the two countries have continuously sought new ways to strengthen ties. And this is evidenced by the conclusion of 11 bilateral agreements whose reach cover technical cooperation, tourism, culture, taxation, trade and investment. Venezuela has always demonstrated a commitment to the cultural exchanges between the people of our countries, particularly in the enhancement of the language skills of the people of Barbados through the work of the Venezuelan Institute for Culture and Cooperation. Ms. Husband says for Barbados, progress hinges heavily on the country's ability to collaborate with its neighbors. Our shared historical, cultural and institutional linkages create a foundation through which we can deepen our cooperation. And to this end, Barbados pledges its ongoing cooperation and consultation with Venezuela on matters of mutual concern with the aim of confronting the challenges that face us individually and as a region. For newly installed Venezuelan Ambassador Francisco Santana, the feeling is mutual. In addition, amid allegations to the contrary, he emphasized his country's commitment to the promotion of human rights. Undoubtedly, in contrary to smears and slanderous media campaigns against our country, Venezuela stands firm for the defense and promotion of human rights. Likewise, Venezuela fully supports CARICOM efforts to rightfully obtain reparations for descendants of enslaved people. During the ceremony, diplomatic staff from other embassies on the island were treated to traditional Venezuelan performances. Also honored were Venezuela's liberator Simón Bolívar, former president Hugo Chávez, and current president Nicolas Maduro. Kareem Smith, CBC News. The Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency is working with its partners as the region prepares for the first major system of the 2018 Atlantic hurricane season, Hurricane Beryl. 
Executive Director Ronald Jackson says their partners are on standby and they have a meeting planned for tomorrow morning to determine their course of action. He was speaking to our CBC News at the CARICOM meeting being held in Jamaica. We've now spoken to all the states um, to make sure that they have started their own uh, pre-impact preparations. And so that has been completed and an information note has been produced by, by our officers in that regard. We've scheduled an 11 a.m. brief with CIMH, which is the Center for Hydrology and Metrology, along with the member states, just to go over the respective scenarios and to tighten plans a little bit more. Uh, a little later today, I'm going to be speaking with members of the UN community, just to compare notes and to see you know, what additional support they can bring to, bring to bear. We're hoping that the forecast becomes more favorable, but we are very mindful that there is cascading vulnerabilities in Dominica, in Barbuda, uh, and in, in the BVI, given and Anguilla, given that they were impacted last year, and most of those countries have not yet gotten far in their recovery and reconstruction process. So those citizens are going to be certainly um, under significant threat. So we're having to pay specific attention to those needs. CARICOM Secretary General Erin LaRocque says the Caribbean Court of Justice represents the very essence of the region's independence and sovereignty. His comments follow the swearing in of the CCJ's new president, Justice Adrian Saunders, who replaced the retired Sir Dennis Byron. Mr. LaRocque says the CCJ shows a commitment to the autonomy of the judicial system. Judges of this court are appointed by an independent regional judicial and legal services commission after a rigorous process of recruitment. The president is appointed by the conference on the recommendation of the RJLSC after a similar process. It is an integral edifice in the regional architecture, providing certainty and predictability in the interpretation and application of the revised treaty of Chagramas, which established and governs the CSME, our platform for engineering sustainable growth and development in our community.